Hi everyone! In today's video I'm going to be showing you a super simple construction method to put together a late Victorian or Edwardian walking skirt. There are a lot of pattern drafting instructions from this time period, but unlike modern sewing patterns, they don't often come with detailed instructions for how to put the skirt together. So that's what I'm going to try to provide for you today. If you're new here, or if the title of the video didn't give it away, I don't often strive for historical accuracy on my channel. And today's video is obviously no different. I'll be mixing together modern and historical techniques, which is not everyone's preferred way of working, but it's something that I personally really like doing. And seeing as you clicked on this video, I'm assuming it's something you're not opposed to either. Like with all my videos, I'd really encourage you to implement and do the things that work for you and just skip the ones that don't. There's not a single correct way to put together any project. Lastly, I did want to mention that I'm making this video as part of Cozy or the Costube Symposium. So if you'd like any more information about that, stay tuned until the end or have a look down in the description. So let's get started. When it comes to materials, the first thing you're going to need is, of course, a pattern. There are quite a few Victorian and Edwardian drafting manuals, which have instructions for how to draft your own walking skirt, and I'll put together a list of a few of them that I think would work well with this video. Something to keep in mind is that these instructions sometimes tend to focus mainly on the skirt panels, so the pieces that make up the main body of the skirt, and kind of skip the other bits. So for this video, I've actually put together a little expansion pack for you, which includes pattern pieces for the waistband, the placket, and the pocket, which you can print out and use with any skirt that you've drafted from the list. So there will be a link to that expansion pack as well as to the list of drafting manuals down in the description. For the skirt that I'll be making, I will actually be using my own pattern, which unfortunately is not available yet at this stage because I'm still testing it out to make sure it's all okay. But if you are really, really desperate to have the exact skirt that I'm making, there will also be some information about future pattern releases below. So assuming you've got your pattern ready to go, you're also going to need some fabric and thread. I'm using this yellow cotton canvas or cotton duck to make my skirt, but any medium weight fabric will work fine. You'll also want something to close the opening. I'm using one of these wider hooks and eyes that are meant for skirts and trousers. I also used this thinner linen blend to make my pockets and some grow grain ribbon to attach the pockets to the waistband and reinforce my skirt opening. And finally, you'll want some of this. I've heard this called crin, crin tape, or horsehair braid, and it's what we'll be using to sew the hem instead of adding a facing. Mine is about two inches or five centimeters wide. The first thing I'll need to do is cut out my fabric. I did go ahead and add seam allowance onto my pattern before I printed it out, so I'm just cutting right around the edges. I chose to use 1.5 centimeters, which is about 5 eighths of an inch, but if you drafted your pattern yourself, you can of course use whatever seam allowance you feel comfortable with. Before I start talking about the pockets, I'm just quickly jumping in from the future with something I forgot to mention when I was filming this, and that is the pockets are totally optional. I know that most people love having pockets in their skirts, me included, but let's be honest, the simplest version of a walking skirt would be one that doesn't have pockets. So with that in mind, I did go ahead and do some historical pockets with this project just because I wanted, I wanted to include something that was a little bit different, a little more directly historical, especially with all the modern shortcuts that I'm taking with the rest of the skirt. So I will be honest with you, these are not the simplest pockets to put in. They're a little bit annoying and fiddly, but they're really cool. So, I mean, it's totally up to you. You could also just put in 
normal modern pockets, you could skip the pockets, whatever you want. So I'll go back to current pocket stuff. Before I do anything else, I'm just going to add my facing pieces to my pockets. This will just mean I can treat the pockets as one piece for the rest of the project. So what I'm doing is lining up the facing in the middle of the pocket, pinning it in place, and then stitching with a zigzag stitch around the edges. And once that's done, the pockets should look like this. Next, I'm overlocking the long edges of the skirt panels and all the edges of the pockets. I'm also going to take my placket piece, fold it in half, and overlock along the long side and the bottom edge. Please no one panic if you don't have an overlocker. Doing this with a zigzag stitch on a machine or even overcasting the edges by hand would be absolutely fine. The important thing here is really just that I want to get the raw edges finished off before I start assembling the skirt. That's because it's a lot easier to finish off raw edges when the skirt is still a bunch of individual pieces rather than trying to wrangle around a whole finished skirt, trying to get back into all the little corners. So here is what my pieces look like now. These are the skirt panels, the pockets, the waistband, and the placket. Now I haven't done any overlocking on any of the waist edges. That means both the skirt panels, the waist edge of those, that means the waistband, and it means the top edge of the placket. That's because when I sew the waistband on, it's going to cover all of those raw edges. So if I added any overlocking in there, it would really just create extra bulk. That also applies to the hem of the skirt, so I haven't overlocked any of these edges either. Again, that's because I'll be finishing the hem off with the crin tape, and adding overlocking really isn't necessary because that edge is going to get covered anyway. So now that everything is at this stage, I'm going to put the skirt panels on a hanger and hang them up overnight. This is because some of the edges are on a slight bias, and I want them to stretch out before I sew the skirt together, instead of stretching later and making the seam pucker. So I'll catch up with you tomorrow. So it's the next day now and I'm going to try to get the skirt finished today, but before I get started I thought I would talk for a second about hanging those skirt panels up overnight. So because I did that, the bias edges are probably going to be slightly longer than the straight grain edges. That's totally fine, that's normal, it's supposed to happen, but it does mean that I want to sew all my seams starting at the waist. That's because my pattern, most walking skirt patterns actually, have a little bit of shaping at the waist, at the top of the panels. So I want to make sure that all of that still lines up so that I don't run into any problems with the shaping or the fit or anything being thrown off because of this. It does mean that the hem will probably be a little bit uneven, but again, that's to be expected and we'll just even that off when we get there. However, this skirt does have a placket and pockets which are up near the waist, so I'm going to start thinking about those now instead of sewing the seams and then trying to put them in afterwards. This will mean that they're a little bit easier to put in because I'm just dealing with two skirt panels at a time instead of trying to put a pocket into a finished skirt, so there's less fabric to contend with. It also means that, again, I'm sewing things starting from the waist, and it's just going to mean that everything lines up properly. I'm starting off with the placket, so I have both my back skirt panels laying flat on the table. 
So this is the left side and this is the right side. This is the center back seam and they both have the right side facing up. Then I'm just going to take my placket and I'm going to lay it on top of the left side. I'm going to line up the waist edge and the center back edge and I'm just going to sew from the top of the placket all the way down to the bottom of the placket. My pattern has one and a half centimeter seam allowance, so I'll just sew one and a half centimeters from the edge. Then I'll press the placket away from the skirt panel, flip the pieces so they're right sides together, and line up the waist edge. I'm going to mark the edge of the seam allowance at the bottom of the placket, and sew from this point down to the hem. It's important to make sure that all the edges of the placket are facing into the seam allowance when you do this, otherwise the placket will end up on the outside of the skirt. And then I can press the seam open, and the placket, as well as the center back seam, are finished. Well, it's finished if you want to make the simplest version possible. If you're okay with doing a few extra steps to make yours a little bit stronger, I would also sew down this seam allowance here and add a few extra stitches across the opening to reinforce it. Depending on how much your fabric stretches on the bias, you might also want to add a piece of tape or ribbon to this edge to keep it from stretching. When it comes to the pockets, I'm going to assume that you have a seam that you can put these in. I'm putting mine in the side seam of my skirt, but it doesn't really matter if yours go in exactly the same place. The pockets themselves look a little bit different from modern pockets, so I thought I would just show you how they go together before I start sewing. So the shape of these is a little bit like a house, and the top of the roof is the top of the pocket. These two slanted sections are the two sides of the opening, which means that this is the bottom, and these are the sides. The first thing I'm going to do is put the sides together. Then I'm going to fold the pocket so that the seam I just sewed is right down the middle and close the bottom edge. That gives me something that looks like this. And if I put the two openings together, hopefully you can see how this would function as a pocket. So starting with the sides, I'm going to sew from the point where my seam allowance ends all the way to the bottom edge of the pocket. The reason I'm leaving the seam allowance loose at the top of the pocket is because I'll need it that way to sew the pocket into the skirt later on. I'll just be sewing my pockets together, right sides together, with a small machine stitch. This means that all my seam allowances will be on the outside of the pocket, so I won't be able to feel them when I put my hands inside the pocket. If you want to, you can do French seams or flat felt seams instead, which would also make your pocket a little bit stronger. So once I've sewn my first seam, I'll press that open and then sew along the bottom edge of the pocket as well. So now the pocket should look something like this. And once it goes into the skirt, it'll look a bit like this and the top We'll fold. We'll do that properly once we're putting it in, but essentially, here we go. I hope that gives you somewhat of an idea of how this functions as a pocket. So the next thing I'm going to do is add a little piece of grosgrain ribbon to the top. That's just going to help support any weight of whatever I put in the pocket because it's going to get attached into the waistband. I'm going to put it at the center and I'm going to put it on the outside, so the, the bit without the facing. And also one line of stitching to hold it on for now. And then once it's actually in and everything's sort of pleated in place, we'll add a little bit more just to make it more secure. Because the pockets don't start 
right at the waist. I also need to sew together the top part of the side seam before I can put my pockets in. For my skirt, I want the pocket opening to start 10 centimeters or four inches below the waistband. So I'll be sewing together the seam allowance and then 10 more centimeters below that. And finally, I can put my pocket in. So I'm just going to line everything up and pin together the seam. So when you're sewing the pocket on, you want to start at the top of the pocket opening and sew all the way until you get to the seam in the pocket. So you can see here that the two seams meet. It is quite a tight corner though, so if you're having a hard time getting in there with your machine, you can also just sew the last bit by hand to make it a little bit easier. Then I'm going to press those seams open and then press them flat. Once that's done, the inside of the pocket should look like this. So next I'm going to take this top edge, which should look something like this. I'm going to press it flat and then I'm going to just trim off the very tip of this corner. And then I'll do another row of zigzag stitching, which will encase the raw edges and hold it to the tape. Like I did with the placket, I'm also going to go ahead and sew the lower part of the seam while I have it here anyway. I'll start sewing where my previous line of stitching ends to make sure that I'm not catching the pocket into the rest of the seam. And then just continue all the way to the hem. If you wanted your pocket to be really subtle, you could of course make it from the same color as your skirt, either from exactly the same fabric as your skirt or from a matching lining. Since my yellow fabric was a little bit too thick to use for pockets, and I used this grey instead, you can catch little glimpses of it every now and then, especially when, you know, I'm holding it open like this. <laughs> One thing I could do to help with that is add a little row of hand stitching, or machine stitching, just along the opening. That would just help to hold the lining to the inside and mean that I would mostly just see this facing in the back. Now that the placket and pockets are sewn, I'm going to sew together the rest of my seams. I'm just sewing these by machine, right sides together, and then pressing them open. Once all your seams are sewn, your skirt should basically look like a skirt. If your pattern has any pleats or gathers at the back, it'll probably look like it's a little bit too big, but we'll fix that when we put the waistband on. To put the waistband on, I'm first going to line up the centre front of the waistband with the centre front of the skirt, making sure that the longer half of the waistband is on the side of the skirt with the placket. Then I'm just going to pin them together from the centre front up to the point where my pleats start. My skirt has four panels and only the centre back panel is going to be gathered, so I'm pinning from the centre front up to the seam between panels three and four. You could do the whole waistband at once if you wanted, but personally I just find it's a little bit easier to get the pleats sitting neatly if the front of the waistband is already securely in place. As I do this, I'm also cutting a few very small notches into the seam allowance of the skirt. This is because the waistline of the skirt is a curve, so the inner edge of the seam allowance is actually a little bit smaller than the actual waistline. So this will just help it sit more nicely. So once I've pinned the front section of the waistband on, I'm going to go ahead and sew that in place. As I do this first line of stitching, I'm also going to make sure that I'm catching the tape from the pockets. These should sit smoothly between the pocket and the waistband, so you don't want the skirt seam to be tighter than the tape, or vice versa. So now I need to fit the rest of this fabric into the waistband. I'm going to start by lining up the centre back edges of the skirt and waistband, 
keeping in mind that the centre back of the skirt is already finished off while the waistband isn't. So the waistband seam allowance should stick out past the skirt and the placket. Then I'm just going to pleat the fabric until it fits into the waistband and I'm happy with how everything looks. And then I'll sew that in place as well. I thought I should also mention that I did not do any sort of pleat math with mine, I just did it by eye. If you wanted to make it even easier, and assuming your skirt fabric is thin enough for it, you could also just do gathers instead of the pleats. Now I can fold the seam allowance at the back of the skirt in, fold the waistband up and over to the inside of the skirt, and fold under the seam allowance on the inside. Give everything a good press, and then I can sew this edge down, either by hand or by machine. Finally, I'm going to add a hook and bar to the opening of the waistband, and then I can try the skirt on. You can definitely add some extra hooks and bars along your placket if you want the opening to be a little bit more secure. Whether or not you need this will probably depend partially on personal preference and also on your skirt pattern. Generally, skirts that have more fabric in them and are fuller, they're going to have less pressure on the opening, so it'll probably stay shut on its own. But again, I just wanted to give you the option, at least, of doing things the simplest way possible. And in this case, that would be sticking with the one set. When it comes to leveling the hem, you have a couple of options for how to do this. You could either put the skirt on a mannequin and mark an even hem by measuring up from the floor. You could recruit someone else to mark the hem while you're wearing the skirt. Or you can kind of eyeball it and hope for the best. Though that will probably work better if your skirt panels didn't stretch very much when you hung them up overnight. Once I have an even hem marked, I can cut off any excess and then I'm ready to sew my hem. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm using horsehair braid to sew my hem. Walking skirts typically have a facing in the hem, which helps to kick the skirt out away from your legs and creates the typical late Victorian silhouette. Using the horsehair braid will create a similar effect with a bit less work, since I won't have to cut out or sew a shaped facing. Before I sew this on, I'm first going to bind the edge with a scrap of fabric. This will just keep any of these cut fibers from catching on anything when the skirt is done. With the horsehair on the outside of the skirt, I'm going to line it up with the raw edge. I'll pin it in place all the way around the skirt. Leave a small overlap where I started and trim. Then I'm going to sew all the way around the hem, sewing half of my seam allowance away from the edge. So because my seam allowance is one and a half centimeters, I'll be sewing three quarters of a centimeter away from the edge. To get this to the inside of the skirt, I'll flip it around like this, which will encase my raw edge. To make sure the hem looks nice and neat, I'll press the first fold first, and then flip around and press the second fold as well. Now I'm ready to sew down the top edge. I do have a couple of options for how to do this, so I could either sew it down by machine, like I did for this mock-up for a different project, I could sew it down by hand, or I can use the blind hem stitch on my machine. Now this won't look quite as neat from the inside, since the horsehair isn't a solid piece of fabric, the stitches do get kind of uneven since they go in the different holes and the holes are far further apart, but it should be pretty invisible from the outside and it's quick and easy. To do this, I'm first going to baste the horsehair braid in place. Then I'm going to flip the hem like this, so I'm sewing from the underside of the horsehair. hair. 
My stitches will go along the edge of the braid, with every fourth stitch moving across in a zigzag to catch the fold of the skirt fabric too. Once that's done, I can press my hem to get rid of the fold, and the skirt is finished. So there we have it! I hope that you enjoyed this video and hopefully found some of it useful. Again, I do have the link in the description for the different drafting instructions, as well as to the pattern pieces that I've made for the waistband, placket and pockets, in case this project is something you would like to try for yourself. And like I mentioned at the beginning, I'm making this video as part of Cozy, or the Coztube Symposium, which is basically a big group of Coztubers getting together to create content for you. So if you're watching this the weekend that it comes out, there will be a bunch of stuff you can participate in. Instagram events, a Discord server, badges to collect. There's a link to mine in the description as well. But even if you're watching this and the event has passed, I would still recommend having a look because I'll put a link to a playlist for all the videos so that you can see all the stuff that was created. And yeah, so that's all I've got for you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.